There's never been more scrutiny on the world's major religions, with a series of sex abuse scandals and cover-ups testing the most faithful. But there's an equally sinister doctrine being openly preached in small suburban churches scattered around Australia. They call themselves the Independent Baptists, a radical non-aligned movement with no connection to the mainstream Australian Baptist ministries. Under the extreme teachings of this church, women must submit to their husband's every whim. Tonight, a very brave victim of this evil doctrine has decided enough is enough. Joy Harris lived through hell by being married to Larry Harris, a so-called Christian pastor who raped her several times a day. But Joy's also discovered this cruel dogma runs deep. Her own son, also a pastor, has now turned against her. It's a cruel betrayal almost beyond comprehension. For nearly four decades, Joy Harris was forced into submission and abused by the man she was supposed to trust most, all in the name of God. He was the ultimate bully, wasn't he? Yeah, actually. <laughs> but a bully with a Bible. Mm-hmm, yeah. W which for you was even worse. You know, my husband knew I would do it because I want to please God. And it's, um, I look back on it now and I realize I didn't have to stay, but I thought I did. Tonight, inside the dark Christian scandal in suburban Queensland that's torn Joy's family apart, the preacher husband who raped her. We're not having a discussion as friends here. This is a duty of the police. Committed to Christ. Their radical pastor's son. To die for him. We're simple, old-fashioned, Bible-believing people. The veteran detective called to investigate. I mean, it was disgusting. To be honest, that's the only words I could really say. And the church elder accused of not doing enough to address it. If you break the law, you go to jail. The bad, sad thing to me is I've stood in front of hundreds of women teaching this submit to your husband thing. It was the 1970s in America. And Joy was just 18 when she fell in love with a conservative young Bible student named Larry. She thought she'd found a kindred spirit, but he had other things on his mind. Right from the beginning, he wanted to be intimate like he knew, and he told me he believed to wait till marriage to be intimate, but he would, every chance he could get, push me as far as I would let him. Joy and Larry soon found their way here to the Valley Forge Baptist Church in Pennsylvania. It's part of the breakaway independent Baptist movement a radical brand of worship that believes in answering only to God. And, as Larry Harris understood, tells women to submit to their husband's every desire. It's an ethos so extreme that former members say it's not a religion, it's a cult. Just the idea of submission was the, a big thing. Um, if I say it, you have to do it, even if it's sinful. The church appointed Larry and Joy as missionaries in Australia in 1994. But by then, Larry was already out of control. He thought it was a, you know, the more times a day he could have it, the more of a man he was. <clears throat> so, you know, he would get up to six, seven times a day and it didn't care if he caused me pain. So, sorry, Joy, so six, six or seven times a day Mm -hmm. If I tried to, to run away, he locked me in the room with him and grabbed my chin and forced me this far away to look into his eyes. And all in the name of the Bible, that's how he'd make you submit? Yes, unfortunately. Here's what Larry used as his excuse. Ephesians chapter 5. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, 
so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Look, that's in the Bible, and the meaning of it is, is not, you know, there's nothing um, bad about it. It's, it's a good teaching, um, but it's been twisted. It's been perverted. Larry and Joy's son, Jason, was once a promising young independent Baptist pastor. But he now describes it as a cult with warped views on women. Yeah, she was, I mean, we didn't realize at the time completely, but she was a sex slave. It's a hard thing to say about your own mother. Yeah, but now that's exactly what it was. The point of Christianity is God. Jason quit the movement in 2006 and has started his own church in Cairns. He has all of these things perfectly. Where he preaches to a fledgling flock of three. And the joy expands, it gets bigger. When you told the church elders about what had happened, what did they say? I never told anyone, uh, my adult children. Did, and it took the like the fifth person telling our sending pastor for him to take it seriously. Jason is the one that finally said there will be front page headlines, either suicide or murder, if something's not done. I'm glad to be a part. Scott Wendell is the senior pastor of Valley Forge Baptist Church. And the man who sent Joy and Larry to Australia as missionaries. The moment he received Jason's warning, he took drastic action. We immediately called, called them back from the field. We had him resign as a missionary, and we started intense uh, marriage counseling. Which but he insists he was never aware that Joy was in physical danger and that there was no need to involve the authorities. Why didn't you report it to the police? There was no violence reported. It was verbal abuse. Are you telling me that you brought them all the way back from Australia? All the way back from Australia. And put them through intense counselling because, because he was shouting at his wife? Absolutely. Pastor, I don't believe you. Absolutely. You read 1 Timothy chapter 3 for yourself. A man that is given to temper, a man that doesn't love his wife, is disqualified from the ministry. When you first heard that Larry was on rape charges, were you surprised? Um, I, 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 I can't say that I, I was surprised. So you half expected his anger issues to get to the stage where he was capable of committing rape? He was, if he returned to that road, that, that would be a, a possibility and it happened, yes. If you thought he was potentially capable of such violence mm -hmm. to the point where it could get to rape, how the heck did you think counselling was going to fix issue you you can't arrest someone who hasn't committed a crime but joy blames the movement's autocratic structure and refusal to recognize any authority other than God how can you be in a leadership position and not call the police to keep it hidden so if you're inside the the organization, you're, you're, you're pretty well safe. Especially if you're a pastor, they protect their own leadership. After six years of intense counseling in America, Joy and Larry returned to Australia in 2009. Almost immediately, the rape resumed. This time, Joy turned to police. There's nothing more to say about it. I, okay. We had sex just like normal and then and then uh, at, at the end she kind of rolled over and started crying and I don't know what prompted it I have no idea how would you describe the nature of the abuse that she suffered look it was sexual assault it was rapes it was deprivation of liberty I mean it was disgusting to be honest that's the only words I could really say Detective Sergeant Brendan Young led the investigation and interviewed both Joy and Larry. 
the Bible does say the husband is to love the wife and the wife is to submit to the husband. So that's, that's what the Bible says. He was appalled by what he uncovered. So yeah, I don't, I don't see any point in any further discussion of, of that. I think he had an extreme interpretation of what, uh, you know, of what Christianity was and what their uh, belief was with their Baptist beliefs. It certainly wasn't normal. The church elders in America thought that Larry's deviancy could be cured by some counselling. As a police officer, what do you make of that? I don't think deviancy can be cured by counselling. I think, if anything, the events escalated after the counselling had finished. In January, Larry pleaded guilty to raping his wife twice in Queensland and was sentenced to five years in prison. When he's released, Joy plans to have him charged in New South Wales, where the majority of the abuse occurred. But astoundingly, despite his admissions of guilt, Larry still has loyal supporters, both within the church and his own family. Your own son thinks that it's your fault. Yeah, that I'm just as guilty as a rapist, my, my rapist, if I told him no one time in all those years. I'm wrong. I'm displeasing God and God's angry and I need to repent. So. Coming up. Willing to die for him. The gospel according to Kevin Harris. The scripture doesn't say to ring the police. How this radical Christian pastor blames his own mother for being raped. Her husband asks for sex and the woman says no and that's her fault. There's nothing else you have to ask me, because I can go. And the brother he excommunicated. You can't tell a woman who was raped that it's her fault. It's evil. It's evil. That's next on 60 Minutes.